Oh, talking about DJing, I have to I have to declare an apology. I have to be I have to be apologetic today. Today is Agostino Sorry Day. I actually apologize, right? And it's something I have to apologize for, but something that I'm not necessarily known for. It's not something that I usually do. I usually got some staunch defense against sort of stuff, but you know, you're going to a, another country, you're feeling a little bit excited, you're feeling a little bit giggly, you're feeling a little bit giddy, sorry, and you wanna just, you know, enhance your experience. And sometimes you get in your own head, you sometimes get worried that you won't get into a place and you're like, Oh my god, it's gonna fuck up, but you know by and large when you go on your own, you always get in. So I was just worried, right? So when I you guys know I went to Berlin a few weeks ago. Went to Bergen Pacific to go see some DJs play. And before I went out there, I realized when I looked at the lineup, I was like, oh shit, Crystal Clear's playing. I was like, oh shit, Crystal Clear, I know that guy. I DJed with him long, once once before. DJed with him, I wouldn't say that. He, I was DJing in a place that he happened to be DJing after, right? After me, after I played a set. It was like a, some like Shoreditch store opening thing. Um, and Crystal Clear played after me. Um, really cool. He kind of complimented my tracks and was just generally a good dude. Um, you know, I exchanged a message with him a couple of times after after the fact. Once, I think, to book him for a party I was going to do. And then another, just, you know, just in general, just being, you know, a friendly DJ pal. You know, then we're not really friends, but in my head we are. So, um, yeah, I was going to Berlin. I saw he was on a bird guy. And I was like, oh, let me reach out to this guy because obviously he's my friend. Not really. And see if I can get on the guest list. I messaged him and, you know, of course, got complete air on road, which is, you know, n not too dissimilar from what I was expecting. So, you know, I, I kind of had the adage of you'd never done until you ask. So I never really thought much of it. I just continued my life, went to Berlin, got in pretty easily and everything went well. Saw him play. I was like, yeah, it was amazing. Great. Don't hold any grudges because, again, he doesn't owe me an explanation. He's not my friend. Doesn't owe me a uh, response. Not my friend. No problem. But then I saw this thread from uh, another DJ in the scene called DJ Non-Compliant or Non-Compliant, sorry, that you guys will be familiar with. And she said something that really made me feel a bit yucky for sending in a message. And I'm going to read out the thread, right? And I kind of read a kind of a response on there that you can see for your own eyes. So, Non-Compliant made this tweet um, the other day after she kind of announced that she was going to DJ at the Burger Iron 2, right? And you can see my name at the bottom there, so you're going to see what I'm going to say. She said the following tweet, right? She said, Dear random strangers asking for guests to Berlin. At uh, Burger sorry. Do you just assume none of our DJs, or none of DJs have friends? <laughs> And I saw the tweet, I was like, oh shit. It made me immediately remember the message I sent to Crystal Clear. Message you just sent to him. And I was like, oh man, that was probably a bad move, innit? But in the time, in a moment, I didn't think of it as a bad thing. I just kind of assumed I've spoken to this guy before. I don't know why in my head I thought it was, a, it was cool. Obviously, it wasn't. But I just assumed in my head it would be fine. So I sent a message. But then in my head also, I didn't expect a response if it was a no, right? I kind of had that, I have kind of had that thing in my memory of when Kanye West said in the interview. If I don't say yes, it means no. So when you when I when you send or you, when you request something from somebody that has more status or influence than you, they don't. They you. I usually ex expect. I usually assume that they probably have a lot of requests coming at them. So it's their prerog. It's within their prerogative. You no, know, um, it's their right to choose who they respond to and don't respond to. I don't take it personally because you know you are reaching out to the person with higher status or higher pull or with the thing that you need. It's up to them to decide whether or not they want to reply or not. So I didn't really think much of it. If he doesn't reply, he doesn't reply. So she said that. And then my tweet after, well, there was, as a response, was the following. I said, the common adage is, you don't know if you don't ask. Laugh emoji. And I guess there's nothing wrong with strangers asking in in, respe in, a, in a respectable manner. And you, an artist, um, ignoring a request or politely declining. Unless you're getting 50 plus requests each day, each time you play, then they can fuck off. Yeah? And compliance with the following. Ask anyone who's ever played. The flood of requests from strangers starts about a week before and continues well past the time after this have to turn in their guest list. It's fully obnoxious. And then I said, this, which again, it's completely true. There's nothing there that's not true because I think I sent it a couple of weeks beforehand. So obviously I was cognitive enough or aware enough to think, you know, let me get it in beforehand. But it's like, imagine asking a DJ, especially somebody that Crystal Clear State is over non-compliant or those other DJs and asking them to get you on a guest list, assuming that that DJ hasn't had their own friends request those same spots when they announce it. It's it's similar to like, you know, I'm sure as a DJ when you were coming up or when you were playing open decks or when you were just, you know, playing in fucking shitholes, you probably couldn't get, you probably couldn't pay your friends to come and see you play in some of the places clubs you played at. But the moment you reach a certain point where you start playing the festivals that all your friends go to anyway, the clubs that they all attend to anyway, then suddenly the requests start piling in because you now suddenly have reached a stage that everyone kind of needs something from you. So I, I'm, I'm fully aware that that was a real error on my part. But again, I didn't really see it from that point of view because you're just looking at it from like, you want something, right? 
and that could probably happen to a lot of people ask for favors you don't necessarily see it from the uh point of view from the person you're asking from you just see you know that's my friend i need some money they should be able to give it to me but you don't see it from their end where it's like if you're asking them for money that must mean everyone else is aware that they also have a lot of money so they're potentially being pulled in all different directions from their family to their siblings not from their parents to their siblings to colleagues at work to close friends they grew up with everyone's pulling at them so for you asking a request and then getting upset and not responding is as compliant non-compliant said very very obnoxious and then i said in response i kind of conceded and was like okay fair enough i didn't know it was um that bad of an issue sounds incredibly annoying and like other guys have said very presumptuous on their part hopefully you, your tweet will go a long way to addressing the issue in some way i fully had my tail between my legs got embarrassed just kind of you know ran for the hills and you know the phrase goes on everyone's side kind of um um uh, i started giving them to all them instead of friends that don't show up huh? yeah exactly so and then that's what i said and then at the bottom here this dude here love fingers who is another um, very popular producer and dj said the following which was quite a good point he says i started giving it to all of the people that asked me instead of my friends who don't show up which is just, again imagine the front imagine the fucking front of a dude or a girl whoever it may be or a gaggle of friends to ask their friend who's playing at the burger and really an important set a dj said that if i had to play i would be having nightmares about it for you know two three weeks on edge i'd be planning my tunes to the fucking core i'd be fucking so scared of making a mistake when i go there, right so you're worried about playing the set and your friends kind of you know expound that worry by requesting you dj by requesting guest spots which is nerve-wracking to say at least because now your friends are going to come see you it's fair it's bad it's bad enough clanging and having a shit set in front of strangers but imagine doing it in front of people you don't know no imagine doing it in front of people that you do know right so it's a complete fuck show so imagine doing it with your friends and then not turning up to the gig that's fully piss, like a piss take so this guy um Lovefinger says now he's what he does is give them to people that request them instead of the people that don't turn up which is another way to do it but i think in general this kind of goes out to everyone like again as i repeat this is my formal apology to crystal clear i apologize for you know being presumptuous and thinking you don't have any friends even though he used to fucking live in berlin himself so obviously he's gonna have people kind of reaching out and wanting to have guest spots my bad so i apologize for that but also this is a formal announcement and awareness to everybody out there if you have dj friends or if you have people that or if you have people that you want to reach out to to get guest lists for really hard to go to spots or dj um gigs don't only do it if you've been supporting he or she from the very beginning if you were uh, if you went to go see let me i don't know why i mentioned a lot but if you went to go see fucking a claire fifi play at some shitty pub somewhere in east london right and you were the first person to buy her tunes or something like that right and she's seen you with her at some shitty place in the pub and she remembers your face and stuff and you have some cordial hires and buyers and you exchange hugs and shit and maybe she's offered you a guest this spot some other times and you've kind of maybe um you know then uh, taken her up on an offer here and then and she plays at burger and you're like hey reaching out to her maybe then because there's something there there has there, there's a there's a link between you guys there's some commonality there and there's also the idea that you've kind of supported her from the very beginning right she might feel obliged to kind of give you a spot because you're actually a supporter you're not even a friend that just has to support because you're a friend you're a stranger who happens to be following her career and she's appreciative of the support but if it's just a regular person if it's just a regular dj who you have no affinity with apart from you liking their dj sets on boiler room or apart from you just being a fan from the outside don't message them leave them alone they've got enough to worry about as it is they're playing at Bergheim. it's essentially the comedy store it's com essentially the comedy store in la for djs right it's the pinnacle it's the mecca it's the place where all the best people play you want to play it's one of the rare places like probably like the comedy store where you want to do well in front of your peers you don't want to fuck up in front of your peers you don't want all your fellow dj friends to think you're shit right and it's also the place where all the discerning real fans of electronic music come Straight up, there's some tourists, but everyone there knows. Uh, everyone there follows producers. They buy vinyl. They buy tunes, even if they don't DJ. They buy people's merch. They're really obsessive about the culture. That's why you'd go and trek all that way to Berlin in the middle of the winter. You go and queue outside to get rejected by this dude tattooed all over his face with piercings coming all over the place. That's why you do it because you love the music. So you don't want to fuck up in that kind of venue. So for people, for strangers to come out, it add, add, added pressure to you by flooding your inbox with requests for a gig that you're going to play when they didn't have any care about you prior because, you know, they didn't care about you and now they saw you in a line that they want to reach out. No, don't do it. Don't do it. It's, it's really bad etiquette. And now I think I've sort of learned my lesson going forward. And it's not a lesson really because it's, I think essentially the first time I've ever done this, right? Email someone I don't know about fucking guest list. But yeah, in future, I'd say don't do it. Just don't do it in general. If you're going to get a guest list spot, just 
finesse it in your own way, right? Um, asking somebody to get you on something is never a good way to do it. I think it just immediately puts the power and the, or not power, it puts the sense of onus, onus on the other person and they have to feel like they're kind of doing you a favor or doing a job for you, which is never a good dynamic you want. You want to be able to put yourself in a position where someone just has to maybe approve you, right? But not you placing all the thing, the authority on their hands like, yes, please help me out with this thing because it, it creates a weird power imbalance. Even with somebody that's not a jackass, they can end up pretending to a jerk. You don't want to do it. Just allow it. So yeah, formal apologies to Crystal Clear. I'm sorry. But also, Love Fingers, if you want to go ahead and set, set on there, guess this on Love Fingers. You know, so he's giving them out like fucking Maltesers, isn't it? So if you want one, go to Love Fingers. Actually, don't. Don't do that. He's probably just talking in jest. But yeah, um, that was my formal apology to um, Crystal Clear. Now we can move on. I feel conscious is clear now. Ah, pun intended. 